We crush all principalities and powers in and over, above and around New York City. In Yeshua's precious name. This is Linda of Christ is King Forever. I have an interesting, I don't know, take today on the changing of the clock in Union Square in New York City. So, um, I being from New York City, I'm from Queens, and uh, I, well, I was born there, and I'm, I don't consider myself a New Yorker, if I can be real with you. Um, so what we have here is something that struck, that caught my eye, clearly, because, it struck me as odd, because this has actually become a countdown clock, right? So you think this is the only piece to this, right? I saw this in my news feed. It says, according to the climate change people who've taken over this clock that had 10 digits that would randomly just, just without real much selection, used to just throw numbers up there and have people kind of puzzled as to what it meant when really it didn't mean anything. Well, it's gone through phases. So it went from uh, that random number, 10 digits up there, randomly scrolling into a type of clock that became useful to the community um and then it also became a they changed it into something else over the years okay i can't touch anything but anyway eventually it became this clock which is the countdown clock and it says there's seven years a hundred in two days which i think now it's a hundred days and um 12 hours and in six minutes and eight seconds. This was a few days ago that I, I found this one. It's like maybe two days ago. So uh, this is interesting because it's part of a bigger structure. It actually has the same artist. I believe they're in the 1980s. These artists came out with these structures that are, are connected. So they're three pieces put together. They're the kind of transparent windows mirror as you know that's all magic and occultic but that's not what we're focusing on now um where the clock stands and then there is a celestial impression that's left next to it you don't know it's celestial a lot of people don't know and the artists um, don't really say much about it i'm gonna leave a video below where they kind of if a few Freudian slips occur in the in the video, and you'll have to hear it for yourself, where they actually do let you in on what that is, but they they kind of dance around it a little bit, and then next to that, there's a gray building, where there is at the lower end, it's just one big gray wall, but it has a moving and ac and an accurate uh, moon. So you, you can see here that we've got all the makings of some type of occultic symbolisms and so forth. But what struck me about this is the name of this is called Metronome, okay? So uh, you know how people gauge the time by the stars and by the planets in the sky and stuff like this. Um, I watched the video because I was struck by this uh this image, you know, I mean, I have somebody who has a, a, you know, a degree in art, and I have a background in it, and I, as much as I want to pull away from it, as, it, it, as much time as it takes for somebody to walk down a New York block is how fast all this information that I'm going to share with you came to me, and it was like I couldn't keep, I couldn't keep my eyes off it, so I basically watched the video trying to figure out what was, what were the artists' take on this, just to hear what they were going to try to entertain people with, what their take was, and um, the few things. They say it is about time being fleeting, so you'll see in a few of these images there is uh, smoke coming from what the artist, one of the two artists, actually uses the word collision. There's a point of collision right there in the center. It glows at night. It smokes most of the day. It has very ominous, foreboding, kind of low-frequency ringing that occurs, kind of almost like a, a metal bowl sound, you know, when you take a metal bowl with a something that I think the Buddhists do to meditate. But anyhow, um, it's a very low frequency sound and it's kind of disturbing hearing. I mean, if you go and you listen to the video, it's very strange. Um, and they said it's a metronome. Now, I happen to have played the piano in the past. My child has played many instruments. She plays a few. And we know what a metronome is. A metronome, 
unlike a pendulum, has a pendulum only has one weight, right? And it's at the bottom and it's interacting with gravity. Whereas Metrodome is is its agenda is to maintain the rhythm and the keeping of time without the pull of anything. Uh, like gravity, for example. I mean, it's being pulled by the, um, of course, the weight. Okay, so there's a little weight that sits on a rod and it goes back and forth and it goes, right? I'm going to put the video below of this video, this movie called um, The Red Violin. That's a very good movie. Um, and you can see how when one advances in violin or in piano, how the metronome, metronome is used. So... Uh, this thing is upside down. Uh, the other difference between the pendulum, it's acting like a pendulum when it shouldn't, and the difference between the, met the metronome and the pendulum is the metronome has two weights. It has one inside and it has one on the outside, the big metal piece on the rod. When you take the metal piece and you move it to the top of the rod, it allows for time to go more... Mm, it, the time is kept, it's just, it takes, uh, it, it counts uh, beats differently. Its time is kept perfectly, except it goes right. Whereas when it gets to the bottom of the rod, it counts uh, the beats and like by fours or by eights. So, but it's keeping time perfectly. Yes, and so I I, I feel like I sound stupid clicking along, but this is how it works. So what we have here, and I actually zoomed in and really looked at it. If you look at this big I guess you could say rock. There's actually a little tiny divot inside of the rock, like on the edge of the rock, where it looks like the end of the metrodome could actually, metronome, could actually fit into. It's almost like it's a rock that's become dislodged from the metronome. And now, you, we all know uh, how the <sighs> hiding in plain, plain sight and the magic of, you know, the magic works, you know the uh, Aleister Crowley type magic type stuff works. They like to hide things in plain sight. So this thing is upside down, first of all, which we, we all know as below, so, so below, which we banish and bind in Yeshua's precious name. If we turn it right side up, what we're looking at is something that is finding its natural pull after being dislodged from from its rod, from the thing that keeps time. It's being dislodged, it's being removed, or no longer being handled by the rod that keeps time. And it's dropping to the bottom of this place that happens to have a ripple effect. It happens to look a bit like water. And it actually gives a bit of a splash. And you can actually take this very transparent image of the universe you know how there's the orbits or I, I know it's a bit of a the orbits aren't perfectly round it's supposed to be like more uh, like an oval but anyway um, you take the orbits and you can actually see where the moon is on the other building that's it's a very plain building all it has is the moon with the dark side of the moon being in black and the light side of the moon there you go with the duality light and darkness being uh, gold and there's also gold splattered. There's something from the celestial bodies that splats, splatters itself on a, on a different canvas that is not sharing the ripple effect with where the moon sits. So this is brick in the center. And brick, of course, represents the earth because you've got the brick and the mortar and it's made of earth. Whereas it seems like time is in gray and the moon is in gray and they're not, you know, they're not encumbered or they're not burdened by what's happening with the brick. So this is kind of interesting. This thing smokes all day and lights by night and it makes a very ominous, strange sound. I mean, so I went and I researched a bit on what exactly the hand is. There's a hand that comes out the top to, I guess, the smoke passes through the hands, but it's making, it's not a hand that's at rest. It's actually very specifically making a specific gesture. And I saw that gesture, and I've seen it a million places before. And I thought to myself, that's that's from somewhere, of course, the artist let us in with their interview, things be to God. Um, they basically said, it's making the same gesture as, uh, because it's George Washington's hand. They took the, the George Washington that's actually, of course, a catty corner to the image. Um, and if you are to stand in front of the George Washington, statue 
he's standing, he's sitting on a horse that happens to be black. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> um, the horse is gesturing toward the mural. He's gesturing toward it. He's actually tipping his head and tilting his head and his foot like a bu like a bugle, like a like the dogs do, like the hunting dogs do. He's pointing with his body toward the mural, and uh, Washington's hand is up high above his own head, like he's reaching up and above for something. And so this is an interesting thing. And he also happens to be on a black horse. Uh, I've, I happen to be somebody who tra who's traveled the world. I've lived in different countries because I'm a military kid. And I've stood uh, against my will because my mom, my mom uh, in front of many different statues. Now, they usually take great pain in making sure that statue maintains its original finish. So if it was a bronze statue, usually they like it not to turn green but to stay bronze or if it was gold. Uh, and I, just, I could literally take a collage of all the statues I've stood in front of and not one would be the same color. The color is extremely important. The fact that he's sitting on a black horse, to me, it's just, you know, clearly it's, it's biblical to me. I, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. George Washington's appearing to be underwater. His hand is reaching out from beyond these ripples that look very much like water. My daughter um, said, well, it looks like he's in a pond or somebody's stuck in a pond or something like this. And it happens to be the same place, kind of like a volcano, you know, will light up and smoke and light. by night it's lit up and by night or by all day, all you see is the smoke. So I'm really not entirely sure what it is exactly they're trying to convey. But the fact that there are seven years, according to the climate change people, you know, climate clock people, seven years, a hundred days, so many hours and so many minutes and so I mean, there's some clock. Um, my child did the math and she said it was like a... 2000, January 1st, 2028, I think is what she said. It happens to be on like the perfect new year. I thought that was kind of weird. So um, I'm just bringing this to your attention that, uh, that this is here, that it absolutely has a message, and this has been chosen, and I don't think it's a coincidence to represent a countdown clock. I think we all know the number seven is extremely uh, prophetic. Uh, for the Christians being the number of completion and the number of uh, tribulation. So, um, th yeah, and I'm going to make it clear, this is because I have, uh, you know, a mind that God, of course, gives through, you know, through speaking of the Holy Spirit, using the instruments that he gives, you can't get a violin to play a different tune, you know, to sound different than what it was created to sound like. I'm definitely not um, made mentally I don't think it's in me mentally even with the Holy Spirit and with all this if its guidance to understand eschatology so I can't even because I don't believe there is a time a day or an hour that anybody's allowed to know including the angels in heaven you know and so I know I, I don't think this is actually a clock counting down a perfect time I really do not believe that and I do believe that um, because I'm artistically minded, I believe God could pull the end, ends of the un, of the universe, the edges of the universe, slightly, like an instrument gets pulled on its strings, and time, space, fabric, the fabric of time and space could change, just so uh, that our clocks would run counter to what the celestial bodies would say, and we would think that. The, the something happened to our clocks or to the celestial bodies, but at the end of the day, God can do whatever he wants. He can shorten the days, he can lengthen the days, he can do whatever he wants. So for me, it's really hard to be concrete with eschatology. Uh, this is the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention about uh, this, the, the, the idea of the metrodome, and I hope I don't go too long, metronome, is when its weight is removed, it because of that internal weight that's inside, it becomes almost like a spring, or it, it it's... A timekeeper that loses its ability to keep time so time actually stands still this is what happens to a metronome when you remove the weight so and I believe the time or the timekeeping uh, aspect of it is altered and uh, I do think that just like when you take the weight and you put it closer to the bottom time shifts you know the, the the rhythm of time is kept in a different way it's almost like sped up or slowed down so I think these are all very interesting aspects to this metronome that's actually upside down and I really think that is a <laughs> 
because you know Yeshua was the rock you know this is how I see it um, I think this is the, univ the principality's way of trying to mock some type of truth so what you do is you turn it right side up and the truth is revealed so anyway this is Linda of Christ is King forever I'm, I, I don't know if this is as edifying as maybe um, I don't know, maybe as I thought it would be, but I just want to share with you what I'm seeing. I'm, I mean, I don't know, uh, it doesn't feel like an artistic expression to me. It doesn't feel abstract. It feels very concrete when you have all the information at your disposal. You have, it's a metronome. It's acting like a pendulum. It's upside down when it should be right side up. It's, this is the hand of, of Washington coming out and benevolently, as I say, benevolently ordaining the smoke or something like this. Some strange stuff that the artists were saying. But you should watch the video of what the artists say. It's fascinating. I'm fascinated by art. So I see this countdown clock and it is a lot more for me foreboding and ominous than maybe for any other average person who's looking at this and going oh you know <laughs> climate clock it would be not as interesting if all these other murals didn't actually go up together all three of these walls and go up together at the same time by the same artists okay so this is end of christ king forever may god be with you